It's all about me. Um, hi, everybody. I just wanted to say thank you all who are here in person and those of you that are at home on Zoom. Thank you for coming also. This is a class hosted by Lawyers Title. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, I wanted to let you know if you do want a credit hour, if you're here, please make sure you're signing up over here for that credit hour if uh, you want that. If you're on Zoom, make sure that your name is listed there and uh, you're not sharing your screen with anybody because, and then you'll get your credit hour in the next uh, 24 to 48 hours. So let me know if you don't receive it and we'll look into that for you. We're trying to make the best of this with all the crazy COVID stuff happening. And I think we're doing a pretty good job. My, I wanted to do a shout out to Tony Rossell who is here helping us with our technology issues that we're having, just a few of them. We got it all figured out. So thank you, Tony. He uh, actually is the manager of HomeBot. So many of you might uh, know what that is. It's a great product for wealth management. So uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce Krista Weibel, who I have known for, what, 12 years or more. Uh, she's worked with people in our own company uh, doing these renovation loans, and she's wonderful at what she does. Uh, so I'm going to let her tell, tell you all about what she does and how you can use her products for your business. And I am dying. So I'm Christy Weibel. I've been in the business going on 25 years. I've made it through a couple incidences of meltdowns. The most infamous is 2008 through 12. I was a commercial credit officer. I had 144 million in my portfolio. I was vice president of two banks. And we got to have the joy of going to people's houses and explaining, don't turn over the house. Although the water cooler talk is that they can buy a house in six months. So how did I make it through 144 million with portfolio money? I lost one house and that's bona fide. 2009, I did 29 new million new money. 2010, I did 28 million new money. 2010, I did 31 million new money. This is portfolio money, all brand new. People have asked me, how did I do it? Well, one is I have um, a double degree in accounting computer science. I'm a cost accountant. I worked at Intel from 90 to 95. Um, at the time, becoming a mom wasn't something so uh, positive back then. So I decided to stay home, be a mom. I became into lending when a friend of ours was, uh, their parents had predatory lending. I got involved. We got them $175,000. It was at the time, it was Mortgage Network. They asked me to come to work. We then formed um, a bank and then I was hired away by Farm Credit. So I have a lot of experience working with developers, builders, um, teaching them how to make money, how to take a lot, divide it, sell it as a proposed build. And I think right now, all of you would agree that 372% material increases we incurred second quarter of this year was a lot of fun. Did anyone having fun in the room? Yeah, no. Moving to renovations, I think is going to be the the next best deal because you're not having to recreate everything, right? When you're getting into it, the goal is to turn and burn, make money. So the one thing about UMQA, they only hire qualified people and they really do train us well. Um, we have all of our loan officers are not certified to do this. So you're not going to just call up John and Nancy, whatever, and say, hey, I want to do this. They can't do it. There is a handful of us that are actually certified. Okay, just... Want to go on? Well, let's skip that one. So the, the good news is, again, when we have material costs, I don't know if anyone's gone out and bought a piece of, you know, a sheet of plywood. What about rebar? People are forgetting about concrete. When we have concrete costs, people think, oh, it's just concrete. They're not into the fact that we have rebar that's going into that concrete. And when we have, what was it? Does anyone remember what it was two months ago to buy rebar? It was, it was like 400%. I could not believe it because it's coming from China. So 
when we're able to relocate walls, and, th and this is the big thing, is that we're gonna get into the structural part and the aesthetics part. When you're into doing, maybe not to the extent of that gentleman, but we are gonna get into where you can move walls, you can redo roofs, you can add, you can, um, I have to keep this close to my face, I got told. And this is really hard for me because if you've ever been in one of my classes, I actually have listings, I have sales, I have appraisal um, numbers, pre, after, everything. So we can't really do this with a Zoom call, but if you look me up afterwards, we can talk about it. So when we're getting into it, I have a customer, they bought a place, they were able to get it for 197,000. It needed about 250 and they sold it for 905. Now, in that situation, they could be their own builder. And what they did was we had a partnership for the buyer and they did the work and then they sold it as a team. So there, there are ways even beyond this that we can talk about, Nicole. This is the, oh, sorry. this is the aesthetics part. It can actually go into existing H, your HVAC, your plumbing, your flooring, nothing about moving walls, adding on, redoing second floor, things like that. But it can even be as minimal as that. Oh, go ahead. So this is where most of my investors that I work with, we have to structure this very carefully because you cannot be your own builder. We have to work per the government with a bona fide licensed general contractor. Most of you are gonna have those in your pocket anyway. So as we're working through this, we're gonna have to have a clean, if we're, if we're moving walls, if we're adding, I mean, moving walls is one thing, but if we're adding on, we had a place go here in Portland actually, where the builder bought the place, sold it on contract to his friend, then we refied the builder off, and his friend was the customer, and we lifted the house, put a basement underneath, and then, mm -hmm, and then we sold it after we did everything. But he added a whole ADU space under the house. So again, nothing illegal, just how do we use the system to get ahead? Because right now with COVID and lending, if you're self-employed, it is, I'm, I'm telling you, hard. And I'm sure you've all talked, you all have your LOs in your pockets, right? To be self-employed, it's really hard. So when you're working on this, we do not require seasoning. So if you have an opportunity to buy a property, and it's in your name. We're gonna sell it to John Smith, who's my buddy, on contract. When he's on deed, I can refinance it and we'll use appraised value at the end of the project. Little things that we work through. We're gonna go through this kind of quick because our builders do have to be checked out. And this is right here is the one that we get the most kickback. Unfortunately, with COVID and the prices of materials that escalated so quickly, some of our builders have been challenged with that part. And if you're gonna be in this, you may not know your best friend's dirty laundry and do you want to know their dirty laundry? So. It's always good to send them to your lender and have us check them out and then make sure it's separation because we don't want you to lose that friendship, okay? Um, we can go on. So once the loan funds, this is actually really awesome because I actually know all my competition. I know WAFED, US Bank, Banner Bank, Columbia Community Bank. Did you know that all of their disbursements team are not in the local area? our disbursements team is located right in Tigard. So when you fund, we fund that loan, you're gonna be assigned one disbursement specialist that will stick with you after on every project and they're in Tigard. When you're in Seattle, Spokane, LA or San Fran, it's easy to not give you know a crap, sorry, 
but about you, right? But we're here and we want this to work out because you're our customer too. Okay. Go ahead. So this is the big key. Remember we were talking about how he lifted the house? We did 75% of the as completed value. So not only did we do the two and a half stories above, we lifted it and added a whole ADU apartment underneath. And it came in 75%. And yes, it sold. And you all know what that would sell for in Portland. Must begin 30 days of the loan closing and be completed within nine months. That is actually more creative because with the pricing back orders that we're experiencing, this is now more 12 months. So that's why I wanted to bring that up because when you see that, that's our normal, but we have to have a level of common sense when we're doing this. <laughs> this, this will not do a tiny house. So sorry. <laughs> yeah. I add that because we have, we've had several calls. Can I buy this and add the cost of a tiny house in the back? It has to be a fix, not, not a tiny house. <laughs> I'm sure you guys get those calls. And it is fixed rate. So if you're trying to do this for a rental, then nothing, you know, that's a good thing to try to get it at three and an eighth or three and a quarter. Okay, Nicole. Um, We'll move through that one, Nicole. This is a big one right here. Like I said, we'll do ADUs. So if you get a lot with, I mean, with a big house and you do want to add an ADU space, so that way you can sell it for obviously more money because that's a hot ticket, we can actually bring that in. Okay, Nicole. Now this, this does having to do um, safety hazards. So I had a realtor call me. He's a relatively new realtor of about 18 months. He had a place come in where he didn't realize that the uh, stairs going from the second floor to the first floor up actually were not attached. So one of his customers going up the stairs, the thing let go. Not all the way, but they did come down a little bit. So we were able to help the seller who is 72 years old. She's, she didn't realize it because she doesn't go upstairs. And so we were able to help that situation where we listed it for them into a renovation and get it sold. You know, it, it helps whatever. It may not help an investor, but if you have someone that could help them. Okay. It is single closing now. Um, this is all in one, but we're going to go back to why the home ready or home style, sorry, home style, it's single family, one dwelling for investor. If you are a primary, you can do up to four. So if you pick it up with an owner carry contract or have the liquidity to pick it up at first, bring in a partner that will be on deed to take it off your hands that's their primary, we can do a renovation home style for that. And then if you sell it afterwards, is this being recorded? Shoot, well, if you sell it, it's up to you, not kidding. And we can borrow up to actually $3 million. Now, some of the other avenues that we've gone, I, my extension of construction doesn't just rely on this during the Paradise file Fires, I'm sure you guys are familiar with that. I had a thousand houses for the rebuild. The fire was two, uh, November 8th, uh, 2018. I was down there in February, 2019. I was down there in March, April, May, and June. And I had a thousand houses for the rebuild. When we had the fires here in Oregon, I had Mill City, Tangent, Detroit Lake, uh, Lions, Malala and Estacada. I'm finishing my last house at Estacada. Sorry, I have one more house in Detroit, but that one's not started yet. So my expertise is in construction development, buying properties, 
how we kind of have to think outside the box. Because right now with COVID and lending, it's really just gotten more and more challenging. So if you're not partnered with the right person, if you have the cash to buy it, that's awesome. You don't need me. But if you, if you ever need ideas or um, just a little bit of someone to bounce an ideas off, my husband and I, for 10 years, built four brand new houses. One started every quarter. We also were able to do flipping houses. We did lose 150000 on our house in Lake Oswego in 2009. But that was the only thing we lost. I thought that was pretty good. We ended up buying a lot of properties for $15,000 lots. And we built. So I've actually done it. I've been there. We've been successful at it. I have no problem sharing my knowledge. So if you guys have any questions ever, just reach out. Um, and that's, we can go ahead. That's it, you guys. I'm just going to wrap it up quick. Because if you have questions, come talk to me. You'll have in my folders that I had over there is my card. Again, we're out here to do just good business. I only do 50 to 60 million new money a year right now because I do so much construction. And as you know, there is a lot of work that goes into that. So if I wasn't doing new construction, I'd be doing 80, 90, 100 million because it's that's easy. That's brain, no brainless work, right? But if you really need help with how do I structure something, how do I get it, how do I do it legally, <laughs> we don't look good in stripes this way, people. Um, an orange does not look good on anyone, not that color. So um, if you ever need it, don't hesitate to reach out to me because we're all in this little bucket together, okay? So thank you. Are you going to own the property outright or are you going to have to finance the land with the bills? What's going to be purchase construction? Okay. Where are you thinking of buying? Okay. Probably going to have a $700,000 bill. Right? At this range, the fork. Now we're 20%. The balance is going to be interest only. You're going to close and you're going to have to come to the table at 20% plus your closing costs. A change with COVID and materials, our contingency, which is a plus fund that we put into the bill, Washington Federal, U.S. Bank, Macy's take it and put it into their escrow account. We do not do that. We build it into a budget. So when I had this amount for your build, that's going to include your contingency. I'm going to go over this really fast because there's a lot of details at that too. Because of the material costs, our contingency was 5%. It went to 10%. We're going to talk about that later. When you close, you're going to make interest-only payments on your loan as you draw it. It's like a credit card. If you use your credit card, it's going to go up. Same way. But we do these all day long. Give me a hard one, though. Someone give me a hard one. Recording in progress. Okay, perfect. I love those. What do you got? I can do that. What's it listed for? Where is it located? So we have crumbling foundation, probably, sorry. We have crumbling foundation. We're probably gonna have some wiring and plumbing issues, right? Probably gonna have windows, roofing. Okay. Let's go 400,000. Because if you're in Selwood, we're still gonna have some Multnomah, right? Permits and issues there. 
So we're gonna go 645 here and go 10% down. Because of the jumbo. This is jumbo, but we're at 548,250 and we can marginalize that. But if you go into the 1.4 million, we're into super jumbo. Yeah. This one we could do 10% down. So you could actually be listing this as that. You can partner with a builder who can provide you plans. You have the builder who's already approved the thumb plot or registered. You're gonna now list it at 645 with full plans. Person gets to pick out carpet, granite, corn, whatever, but you're gonna list it at the 645. How about a really good one? It's a developer, I can't tell you, an investor, because you probably know them. We have a property with a house. They got the property as a whole, as in a non-owner occupied. We're gonna split these off. They've partnered with their builder and they're selling each one for $750,000. And we're gonna sell it as a proposed build. All the risk is off of you. I think that's the thing that we have to start to work on two people. We've all gotten fat and happy. It's been great. Is anyone watching a little nasty word called inflation? I am. Yeah. Has anyone been watching the gas prices and everything? Who here remembers interest rates at 18%? Okay. First house, 1990, got my job at Intel, 125000 a year. I'm 25 years old. I feel really good about myself. I bought my first house. Can anyone tell me what my interest rate was in 1990? 16. 12. Good. Because it was 14, and then it dropped to 12%. People ask me if my credit sucked. I had 805 credits. Now, we've all been really, really lucky with 2.875. How is your customers, and let me ask you this, if your property was 6 or 750, how long is it going to sell at 6%? This is reality. Now, mind you, I'm an accounting computer science double major. I know I get geeky on the numbers, but this is, this is a lot better than this. So I think as we're coming into our investments, which is, again, is, I think renovating is awesome because it's turn and burn, dirty and quit, right? Or if it's too extensive, let's get it partnered with a builder and sell it as a proposed build. Or you get into some of these properties where you can sell them as proposed builds and you're out of there. Here's another really great caveat. They have, I think it was 100,000 in each one of these. But as bare land without construction, no proposed construction, bare land is only worth one thing because the appraiser is going to take the least amount of value because he doesn't know how you're going to finish it. Once you have a proposed home on it, that's your value. So you may have 100,000 in each of these and you're walking away with 200 with zero risk. And this honest to God happens. I have an appraisal I can help you or show you, but I have to take out all these other numbers where they got it for 400 and we just went 1.8 million. And I actually have the numbers to show you guys. So this really works. And I think as we move into this 2022 and inflation here, we have to look at how quickly can we flip and how quickly can we turn because that's going to be how we keep making money and that's how people ask me how did i know to do what i did in 2009 there was a huge lender that went belly up in 2008 and if you've been in the lending business you would know who they were they were shut down in portland one of our number one competitors i went to my board jay Kennick was our, our ceo and i said if we do a baby a, a piggyback course of construction policy on the builder's work that was before because a lot of builders were in bankruptcy right they can't work with you if you're in bankruptcy we can absorb all of these loans sitting there halfway done and he actually did it we went out and we absorbed all those loans 2010 guess who else went cease and desist golf right countrywide 
all those other ones went under, all their constructions, we absorbed and we did that. So I think it's trying to stay ahead of the game, paying attention to where we are on our inflation, what can happen with rates. Because I can guarantee you, you're not going to be doing this at that. So how do we make it where you're not at risk and someone else is? Because once the bank approves it, it's off your back, but you're still making money. And it's all about making money. So let's, let's get her done, right? Do you guys want to give me another one? Okay. <laughs> Can you do this with multi small multifamily? With small multifamily? Four units or less. We can do four, four units or less if it's got one primary. Once you go non-owner occupied, the Fed says one. So non-owner occupied, one single family. If you have someone that's willing to get the loan as a primary. I don't think there's a Schultz in the room saying, I'm not hearing you. <laughs> Now, so we can do one to four primary home style, non-owner occupied investor one. But if you're trying to do it and hold on to it for a rental, it is a good opportunity because you're getting a 30 year fixed and all of it in one place and you're not getting gouged. The one thing that's really great about UNQA is we have flat fees. So when you have that $1.4 million loan, it's $4,995. That's it. You're not getting hit with 1%. Our purchases and refis are a flat $995. Even my 1.8 million, my $3 million one in LA is $995. When you're doing your big builds, it's $49.95. I got one from US Bank. It's 1.85. They were charging them 12,000 just for a flat origination. Half a percent for construction. Ours was 1325 for the construction. $49.95 for your origination. So that can save a lot of money. So, anyone else? Because I love numbers, people. This is what I do. It's what I live for. Any? We don't do those. And don't try adding that tiny home for an ADU. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Where? Okay. Yep, yep, none. Are you sure about that 120? Are those hard bids or are they just like that? I'm just, I'm not picking, I just oh, want to. I don't know. know, this is something that I would look into is doing it with Okay. Uh, so, what do you mean by, I'm not sure about that? Well, no, I thought if you were looking at it. Oh, no, because no, 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 no. I have, I have customers who, and my realtors are my customers, will call me and go, hey, Chrissy, I think that I can get this done for $92,000. And I'm like, okay, have you looked at your sheetrock? Have you looked at some of your labor costs? And they were going on labor costs from six months ago, where today to get some of our uh, crews in, they're having to quadruple the pay. Yeah, so just to be clear, I actually thought I would be looking at fixing up my primary home. So okay. Yes. I'm telling you, I know, I see it. How would I look at what? Oh my gosh, how long have you owned it? Okay, well, you're seasoned already. So, well, the, if you're in it, where, where we run into some problems is where there are non, so on flipping, as you guys know, there has to be some seasoning and that's 90 days, right? Because you gotta make sure that you're not taking advantage of someone and selling it to another friend and scalping. 
but you're at four months, which is going to be beyond the 90 days. So you're going to be looking at a refi. And so what do you owe out on it? Hard, hard. You only owe 50? So that includes the fifth, that includes the 50? Okay. So we're going to take this as your appraised value. And that's our payoff. So 2.875. That one, the, uh, the, now the, the um, I was going to say something, but I'll be polite. The Fed added a half a point cash out. Does everybody know about that? Yeah. So 2.875 for a straight rate in term, credit score is a 770 because you're going to have a low loan to value there. Yeah. To have the divide division. Well, if you have, if you have a lien that was in place when you purchased it, oh, you're just recording it now. What I would do is do a HELOC and get them off and it would be a cash out because the th I thought you said you put them on deed when you actually got it. I'll have to look into that. We've had some changes successfully lately. I have one where it's a Fannie Mae, where the dad wants to gift it to his daughter and son-in-law. So we add, we quick claimed them on the deed. He got it for 415. It praised at uh, 571. They got quick claimed on, and we're just going to do a refi removing mom and dad, and they just got 2.875 with a straight rate and term. You can only do that with Fannie, though, FYI. Right. How much time have you had? I mean, exactly. At two as a realtor or? So what were you doing before the, the two years? So where it gets a little bit tricky on realtors, which is a little different, is we'd have to have your returns of the one year that you file, which is 2020, correct? And then, well, on a realtor, which is kind of cool, is we have your transaction history report. So we'll see how you're doing in 2021 and match it to 2020. So as long as you're not declining, we might be able to do an exception on that. We'd have to see. Exceptions are called just that, exceptions. There, has, there are other avenue, like, sorry, other pieces that go into that, like credit score, debt to income, loan to value. The lower the loan to value, the less risk to the bank. The stronger the credit score, the less risk to the bank. But that's why they call it an exception. We have to look at every single one. How did it go? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we do a lot. Like I do a lot of helping realtors try to demo a house, partner them with a builder, put up the plans, just be there to walk the customer through. Basically the realtor, all they do is list it and then you get out of our way because I've got to work with the builder to get it done. So um, yeah, anyone else? Yeah. <laughs>
Well, that's 12 now. Well, we, we keep in pretty close contact with our builders. So if our builder has put the foundation in, we've got our sill plate in and we're ready to go vertical, which is your walls, and our drop package by par is another six weeks, we're gonna know. So yeah, the biggest thing that I'm getting as a lender on the 46 million in new construction I had last year is customers getting handed $80,000 in change orders. Lumber. The other thing is if you want to, I have another builder who called me kind of uh, quite cranky and I, I bought him a couple of pitchers of beer is his crew, his sheetrock crew was pirated. The builder pulled up, offered the crew three times what he was paying them. They walked off the project and went to his project. And that is happening. So when I was saying about jacked up labor costs, that's what's happening. And it sucks. And I have a customer mad at me, you know, I'm not mad at me, they're just mad. And I get vended on a lot, which I have great shoulders, I can handle it. But the builder called the other builder and he's like, too bad, so sad, you don't have cash to pay them. And he literally had cash envelopes when they got done. So not only do we have material challenges, delay challenges, has anyone tried to paint a house? I mean, my God, six months, are we kidding? Six months out to get your paint. So um, a customer <laughs> drove to Canada and got paint. Go figure. Um, how about dishwashers, refrigerator suites? Uh, 90 days to 120. So that's why we're having to be really close with our builders, which, and I know this is a plug for Umqua, but this is something we do very well, is we are in contact all the time. The builders are in contact. Um, our project managers are in contact. We are in touch with them to know what, what's going on because really it's our collateral and we don't want your collateral back. And we wanna take care of our builders because they're our bread and butter too. So it's, it's mainly talking a lot of people off the ledge right now because they're, the le they're mad at the builder, right? Well, he should have known. Well, no. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> Well, Multnomah, <laughs> there is not enough alcohol in here for Multnomah. <laughs> uh, Multnomah, you're not hearing me, right? <laughs> um, you know, Washington County, we're seeing some, not as many slowdowns as we did six months ago. Multnomah, we are seeing some slowdowns, but believe it or not, they're getting done before the lumber package is getting in. So it, it really, we close on our new constructions without a permit, your home style will require a permit. So keep that in mind. After, yes, that's why we have to have the permit prior. So we have to have the permit, then we'll close, then you start. If it's new construction, we do not require the building permit prior to closing. We do not even require the well in place prior to closing. So, um, No, no, new construction, you have 12 months on your initial contract, another six months because of what we're experiencing. But on a renovation, we're not having to recreate the whole wheel, it's just a renovation, yeah. On our all-in-one. On the home style, you have to have the permit before we can close, yes, yeah. We even have one going to 20, 24 months on our new construction because uh, we had a little thing happen where the foundation fell in. So yeah, that was, a, that was a chemistry issue. But to answer your question, we're not having so much a problem with that piece as we are with the materials and labor uh, being delayed or pirated. Yeah, that's a good question. And that was a good question. Well, we do this, the normal suite of everybody. I was so geared on renovation. I, you told me you're renovating. <laughs> so we do your normal purchases, your refis. We do non-owner occupied one to four. We do construction, renovation, um, USDA, VA, FHA. We do all of that. It's just the one thing that 
we really specialize in and do well is the construction and renovation. Yeah. I have a certain team that literally go to house without a realtor and they're approaching houses and offering them money. They're creating their own inventory. So I'm doing about, well, last month I did 7 million. This month I'm um, about 6.1 million. And my pipeline is, I don't advertise. I very rarely now do classes, but um, all of my, ref it's all referral base. And my teams know, I have teams, and they know that even on Sunday, I'm working for them. So if I have a call coming in at 10 o'clock on a Saturday night, and guess what? There were 23 offers. I was the only lender to pick up that night. They didn't know I had a bottle of wine, but the uh, Saturday night. <laughs> but I was the only lender that picked up and they got the deal. So when you are in teams, there's a trust factor of whom I'm working with, and they have a trust factor with me. And that's my difference, I guess. So go, go find them, go knock on doors. It's working for them. I can't tell you what they're doing because I'm not with them, but I know they're out there walking around knocking on doors and it's working. So. Our, we're fast. The, the delay is always the builder. Once I get a complete build in 45 days and that's because appraisers are taking three weeks. Then we have three day trade. We have to get it into final, which takes two days. CD takes three days. We get that when it's in for final. Then we're actually out for docs, which is two days. Then we sign and we fund. Um, our biggest delay that our builders are experiencing right now is how to give a valid bid and try to capture what ifs on the cost. Once I have that, we're rocking and rolling. It's we only lend if it's an owner or investor actually purchasing the land or doing a refi. So I'm not sure how the contingency comes in. I'm sorry. Oh, um, I understand what you're saying. So I do have some, we still, if you're gonna get a Fannie Freddie loan, we have to have an appraisal. How it is worded in the addendum is the buyer accepts, accepts whatever the value is of the purchase price and will make up the difference. So yes, we do that. Yeah, I have several of those. However, we are starting to see, I'm sure you've heard this from some other LOs, we are starting to see some appraisals not come in. Just because it got bid 105,000 over, it did not necessarily come in at that, uh, that purchase price. The sellers had the, I mean, sorry, the buyers had the liquidity to make up the difference, but we'd, we've had that. We've also, who've all experienced the um, California appraisers yet? You guys haven't? You guys are lucky. We have now a, a, a flush of California, is there anyone here that's a California appraiser? Uh, we've had a flush of California appraisers. In California, if you've done any loans down there, the appraisers are set or capped at what they can charge. A single family's 350, construction 750. They have found out that we have no cap in Oregon and Washington and Idaho. So we have now had several. We even had one that I went to a challenge with from Hawaii. And in the um, area she was in, which is Helvetia, and it should have came in at 1.65, it came in at 905. And she said it was not desirable area. So in two weeks, I had it challenged in one, and that appraiser removed from the AMC. But she literally told two realtors and my customer they were from Hawaii and not familiar with the area. Hawaii is capped, Oregon is not. So we're having, we're starting to see some outrageous appraisal costs. What do we do there? Well, some of us have uh, no-no lists. 
I can't, I don't know who the appraiser is, but my customer is going to find out. And I have them call me as soon as they get the, you know, the call in and I check my no, no list. If it's a no, no list, I want that person to email me and say, I had a terrible experience with this real appraiser. I will not let them step foot on the property. I respond back. I refuse to have this appraiser on the property. We need to reschedule. That's how we're trying to combat it because as you know, we can't know who they are, but we are starting, we've seen quite a bit of that in the last year. That was a good question. Anything else? Yeah, well, yeah. I think prepping customers for the material and having them know it's not the builder, the builder's not out trying to gouge them. It's just go to Home Depot, go to Lowe's, go to PAR and see what costs are. And then you're trying to talk them off the ledge that it's still a good idea. So on that, the bummer thing is this, is Par Lumber and all of the vendors bought all that wood and materials at the higher price. And now you've got a lower price, but they've got a higher inventory sitting. So what they're, I see them starting to do is they're, they're starting to come in the middle, but it's still like when people say, well, it should be 60 bucks for a sheet of plywood and it's still 85. Well, yeah, but they bought it at 125. So they're, they're trying to do that, but until that inventory is gone, it's still going to be up. I am, but we keep that on the down low. You do not compete with your investor teams. <laughs> you, you don't. I go into another state. You know, my husband and I did it for 10 years. We did four houses brand new. We started a new one every quarter. So I was 40 houses in 10 years. Plus we ended up doing a lot of flips. Like I said, we did lose money, but we also did well. But now I do work in other states because we don't want to step on my investor's toes. You have to be respectful of who you work with. That's a really good question. So in order to put it together, I think that this falls into several buckets. If you are lucky enough to find a property with a dilapidated house, that is really huge because you can make some really good money on that. If you can partner with a good builder and remember, you've all seen it, the proposed builds on RMLS, right? That is a, a great way to snap up a property if you can secure it even with private money, here's a good example. This is an investor partner, not in this area. Because remember I showed you that one earlier with the one house and they split off the other two? This is a bona fide happening. The guy picked up 25 acres had a dilipite, actually, it was really quite sad, had an elderly couple living in a falling down house and they only had about 600 square feet that they could move in the house because it was falling down. He picked it up for an incredible price. I think it's an incredible price. It was 400,000 for the whole thing. 25 acres, not developed yet, just 25 acres. Uh-huh. He split it. Got went he did buy them out with a private investor. He is now selling them. It's not in this area, it's up in Washington for eight hundred and fifty thousand. He's the builder. He gets paid out for the land up front. We pay him out. He's gone. He gets paid to build for twelve months to eighteen months. So that's one way. And I can go into detail a lot on that. Another way is if we have one where dilapidated house and you work with an investor to, or private money or whatever you got and HELOC, get it secured, turn around, 
put it up for sale as a proposed build. I mean, there's a lot of things that we can do. So we can talk more about that. Yeah. This one is, is a crown jewel. Every single one of those lots sold in a matter of 48 hours. Proposed builds. Yeah. Oh, it was, yeah. Well, okay. So how I work is too. We'll talk about that. If you want to know some other ideas, you can talk to me afterwards. Because there are ways that as a lender, we're partnering with you as a seller. Mm -hmm. I don't. I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you, my, my teams will literally scour. Um, they have picked up some individuals who are in need of money and they pay them to drive, go look for properties, take pictures, write down addresses. They come back and he does the work. Yes and no. So on construction, if we're doing a portfolio product that is an UMQA portfolio product, when we're doing this, I'm doing an all-in-one construction, which is in those folders that talks about it, that is 100% portfolio money. That means we are the underwriter. We can be creative. When it comes to Fannie and Freddie, there are certain guidelines that Fannie will not cross but Freddie will. And there are some where Freddie won't and Fannie will. Like I said, I have this dad bought the property for 415 cash, gifted it to his daughter and son-in-law, not really gifted it. We kind of put them on deed. And now we're refining a week later, taking him off and they're getting in zero down. It's a rate and term. And that can only be done with Fannie. So you just have to know all the nuances that go into it. I've, I, I'm really good friends with our senior underwriters and they know I put out, I used to underwrite as a commercial credit officer, my own loans. And I did $8 million wineries, $12 million wineries, uh, cold packing fruit uh, warehouses. So I know how to underwrite. So I underwrite all my own files. So I can call them on the phone and say, hey, Rob, I'm thinking about this. And he's like, well, that won't work, Christian, but this will. So I don't mean to be a politician in that answer but you have to know each of the programs and what you can get away with or what you can push with because you don't want to piss off an underwriter. Yeah. That was a good question. You can't, I'm sure you've heard the saying garbage in garbage out. You can't throw crap at the, at the wall and expect it to stick. You want to put together a bona fide package. In your case, I'd be going, here he is in sales. I want your year-to-date monthly realtor, right? I want to know August 15th, what have your sales? I want to know what are you got listed? What have you got in contract? What have you closed? I can take that and argue that. But if I say, oh, he's been a realtor, you, you're going to like him. He's nice. That's not going to get us anywhere. Because in an audit, that, that still hurts when we get smacked. Thanks. All right. Thank you so much for uh, coming out tonight. You guys can hang out uh, as long as you please. Support Lucky Lab, and uh, we'll see you next sep or September 3rd Thursday. Thank you. And for those of you still on,